Welcome in this video, where we are going to implement the free north paper. Uh, so that's a very awesome paper in case you have a review input view, where you have sports input views. Uh, they show a very simple technique, but that is very efficient uh, to get very uh, good results. So this other result we'll get by the end of this video, with an, uh, an implementation in about 100 lines of code. Uh, and we see that, uh, to me at least, the results are very impressive, with only 8 training views. Uh, and of course, you can combine them with other approaches uh, related to, uh, to sparse input views in North. Um, I will implement a few, ne a few others in the uh, upcoming videos, so subscribe if you're interested in North. Um, and yeah, let's dive in. So uh, I will uh, put the link of this code in the description. Uh, if you use the code, please leave a star on this report, it's always helpful, and uh, give the thumbs up to this video. Okay, let's dive into the implementation. We can start by implementing the North model. So as always, we take as input the dimension of the positional encoding for the position and direction. Nothing is changing there. We take as input the hidden dimension for the neural network on t, where t is the uh, is the time step at which we'll uh, stop to do the masking. So with uh, with free north, we mask the uh, positional encoding. Uh, we, we we do some padding on that. not no padding, but we mask on at some zero. Uh, on after t time step, we'll stop those uh, uh, this behavior. So we implement a neural network. This is a standard uh, neural network uh, in North, uh, a neural network with skip connection, uh, where at the beginning it's only dependent on the position. Uh, it predicts the density, and at the end we add the uh, the direction and we predict the color that is direction dependent. Okay, so let's draw uh, a few um, a few hyperparameters, and now let's move to implementing the Poisson encoding. So. Uh, a few extra parameters as opposed to uh, the standard Poisson encoding. So the Poisson encoding is taking as input the uh, uh, the data that needs to be encoded, of course, L, which is the dimension of the Poisson encoding. But now we have an extra parameter, which is step, so that uh, that says at which step we are in the training, and it's also uh, saying if we are doing Poisson encoding for the position or no. Why? It's because uh, for free north we are only doing the uh, the masking for the position for the position or not for the direction. Okay, so what we do, uh, we compute L max. So basically the uh, the maximum, uh, basically the size uh, of the uh, of output. So basically, yeah, we could have uh, just done out.shape. So basically the, um, the dimension of out is two times three times L plus three. Plus three because we are concatenating X again to the output. And if we are at the position, so if we are doing position encoding for the position, we mask the um, we mask the remaining uh, of the uh, we we mask the last dimensions. We set them to zero with the formula explained in the paper, and that also depends on t, which is the maximum, which is the the last time step at which we do the masking. So basically, it's just a linear uh, function. Uh, in the paper, they also propose uh, a nonlinear function, uh, very similar to this one. Uh, but this one seems to work fine. If you want to further improve the results, you can uh, try to do it as a homework uh, to add uh, one or two lines of code to uh, to implement the formula de that is pr uh, presented in the paper. And then for the forward function, so this is very uh, similar to a standard north, we encode the position and direction. So for the position, we mentioned that it's a positional encoding for the position, uh, and it will uh, mask uh, if we are at a time step before t, it will mask uh, the, a, a few uh, dimensions. Uh, okay, once this is done, we can send the embedded position in the uh, neural network. We can retrieve the density and then predict the color based on the uh, hidden features extracted from the block uh, two. Okay, now we can uh, move on to rendering. So first we can compute the accumulated transmittance function. Um, yeah, just a standard implementation of the, uh, of, of the compute accumulated transmittance from alpha uh, yeah, just uh, direct implementation of the equations from the uh, vanilla of paper. Now we can uh, move on to rendering. So we take as input a model that represents our scene, our objects, and we take some rays as input, and we will return the colors of those rays um, uh, based on the on the three D model. We take as input step so that uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can uh, give this information to the neural network, uh, the near and far plane, and the number of bits. So the first thing to do is to sample some time t at which we will uh, sample points. Uh, so, so some time t where we will evaluate the position of the rays. So we sample that linearly between the near plane and the far plane. And then we add a bit of noise to it. 
uh, because otherwise we'll always sample at the same points and that will lead to overfitting. So once we've computed those time t at which we will uh, uh, evaluate the position of the rays, we can uh, basically do the evaluation of those positions. So compute x, the 3D position of the ray at those time t. So this is just the equation of a ray. This is the origin plus t times d. Uh, this is similar to a vector uh, in 2 or 3D. Uh, and then we can reshape the direction so that for each point x in 3D, we have its associated direction. So that x and ray direction have the same shape and so that we can uh, send them to the neural network to query the colors on the density. Once we have the color on density, we can simply uh, compute the um, volumetric integral uh, from um, uh, from, nerve, from volumetric rendering. Uh, and what we do, we add this term plus one minus two eight sum. So basically, this is a regularization for white background. I explained that in my uh, in uh, not in my previous video, but uh, the videos before that, so uh, two weeks uh, ago. Uh, in case you want more detail about white background regularization, this is also explained. Uh, much better in my course about nerve on all those equations I explain, explain much better uh, in case you want to learn more about the equations you can have a look at my course uh, the link is in the description then we can uh, move on to uh, to the uh, to the machine learning part to the training so we have this sample batch function where we will sample uh, data from the uh, uh, from the training data set and then we can move on to the training loop uh, so we take uh, it's a standard uh, supervised learning uh, algorithm. So we take as input a model, an optimizer, the training data, number of epochs, all the hyperparameters that you might have in a, in supervised learning, uh, as well as a few parameters related to nerve, so the near and far plane, as well as the number of pins to do the uh, to compute the integral. So what we can do is to sample a batch from the training data. Uh, and the, the batch is composed in the uh, first with the origin of the ray, the direction, and the ground true pixel value. Based on the rays, we can uh, we can call the rendering function to get the predicted pixel values for those rays, and then we can compare the ground truths to the predicted values and take the MSC loss between them and do a gradient step that is very easy to do in PyTorch. Then we can implement the testing function, uh, so based on the data set, on the image index, so we can get the rays for that, uh, for that image index on the data set, and then we can, um, little by little, so a chunk per chunk, render a few pixels from the image. So we are doing batching. Uh, and then we, act, we uh, put back all the uh, pixels computed together to form the image. And we can reshape it in, the, in a nice uh, 2D image. And then we can just finally plot the image. Then we can put all the pieces together. So we load the uh, training data, the testing data. Uh, let's say that our number of epochs is uh, 80,000. So basically T. Uh, was set to one half of the number of epoch. Um, what we do will only train on eight, uh, uh, yeah, eight, uh, eight training images. So we are only uh, from those data sets. The training data is one hundred image, so we only get uh, one uh, eight image out of it. On those index were chosen uh, from the paper. Those index were mentioned in the appendix of the paper, so that. Uh, they are not cherry picked by myself at least, maybe they are cherry picked by the authors of the paper, but I used the exact same index as they did. Uh, and then we can create a new data set out of those only uh, eight images. We can create the nerve model, the optimizer, and send everything in the training function to train the model. And finally, we can do testing on the 200 um, uh, uh, testing views. And uh, as you've seen in the beginning of this video, we get very great results. That's very impressive with only eight input views. Um, yeah, the field of nerve is is very uh, it's expanding very quickly uh, on uh, there are already a, a few papers that do a training from a single image uh, the, the rendering quality is not always very good it depends on the data uh, I will implement that in a few videos from now so maybe resubscribe if you're interested uh, also leave the thumbs up if this video was helpful and thank you for followed this video through the end